We have an A340E automatic transmission. Uh, Toyota uses this, uh, Jeep uses these. Um, it's a pretty common uh, transmission. This video though is gonna be focusing on removing the valve body, air checking the hydraulic passages for proper uh, clutch engagement, and then uh, uh, looking at the accumulators, inspecting them, and then reinstalling everything and torquing the spec. So before we ever get started, uh, we want to, uh, we just put this on. I modified this table by this cart, by the way. I took a ball peen hammer and I created a trough going to a hole and then put a drain bucket over here. So, uh, and I like the cart because I had this ridge so the fluid won't spill all over the place and it will just be going into that hole. It was an old TV cart, the high school that uh, is no longer being used. So I modified it. All right, you should always blow these off. You don't want any dirt going into your table. You start with a perfectly clean table. You never want to uh, uh, use a table that has any kind of dirt or any parts. You always start with a blank table. That way, if there's a snap ring laying down or a check ball, you know that check ball wasn't there before you started your transmission. So if Whatever's on this table has to go back in. So we're ready to start. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and flip this over and we're gonna put it on upside down. I don't know if there's gonna be any fluid in this. Oh, look at this, there's, there's some dirt here that I need to get off. So I wanna get that off. Uh, so this transmission, I've never taken apart, it's been in our shop for a long time. So we'll see how much fluid there is. But let's finish up blow drying this because I'm not happy with that dirt. So I'm going to take a 10 with a uh, with a uh, electric uh, impact gun that's 3 h drive. This will uh, make it a lot faster for me to take this off. These don't provide a lot of torque, so I'm actually okay uh, for the disassembly and assembly with it. Go ahead and break these free real quick. Now I'm using a uh, impact gun. Uh, where you guys are at that are going to be doing this at, in the class is at a college and they don't give you air tools. So then your choice is a speed ratchet. So a speed ratchet actually is a very fast way to remove bolts provided they don't get stuck. So we'll do the shallow socket. So before there was ever any air tools, this is how mechanics got bolts out in really fast manners. They use those speed ratchets and the speed ratchets really help uh, increase your ability to get things done quicker. So at Miramar College, where my students are at, that's going to be what they use as speed ratchets. Okay. All right. So now let's get a little mallet. The dead blow so I don't damage anything. And lift this off. Yeah, it's not a lot of fluid in there. So I always like putting my bolts in my pan. Oh, it looks like that. Uh, this has been pulled off. So this is it. I got this donated by the uh, one of the colleges, so they failed to put the electrical connectors onto the solenoids. So, anyways, let's go ahead and take off now the the um, valve body or the filter. So I want to take this filter off right here. Um, and this is where example of you know students the, the, the mistake is they don't have two bolts here okay 
So, and they didn't hook up the, the, um, the um, wires to the solenoids. So you gotta hook up all your parts, okay? If, they're, if the, every bolt isn't very important to sealing these passages. So they got these uh, three bolts uh, here, but, or sorry, they got these two bolts. That would have sealed these two passages, but this one right here, needed these two bolts to anchor it down onto the valve body so that's a problem you gotta you gotta every bolt serves a purpose all right and i'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and take these out and it looks like we're missing two tubes too so much for a donated tr uh, transmission to the high school. The person that took this apart didn't have an instructor that verified they put everything back where it's supposed to go. All right. One thing they also made a mistake on is here's my shift linkage. And this is the most common mistake of all. This is a pin on your manual shift link, it's that should go into our manual shift valve. This is the main manual valve for the valve body. If you did this mistake when you put a valve body in or you put the, uh, just did an overhaul, when you shifted it to the gears, you would get nothing. There would be no, no engagement of any gear because the manual shift valve is not on this pin. And that's a very common mistake. I've worked at other colleges and I took apart their transmissions done by students and every one, the pin was not in the manual shift, a shift valve. That's a problem. And one thing I also noticed was the pan had a valve body bolt in it as well. So, um, there we go. So that's coming up. So that was the last bolt. This bolt right here only holds the solenoid in, but with the pan, you notice in the magnet here, there was a bolt, uh, on the magnet. This is a valve body bolt, but they didn't know where the, on the valve body, this bolt goes. Okay. There's a, there's a bolt missing here. Um, Looks like there's a bolt missing here. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you after I pop this tube out. Tube out how to identify where the bolts go. So there should be another tube going from here to here. Okay, um, pretty sure there's three. There we go. So there's the tube. Now I can lift this valve body up. Make sure all these are loose. That might have been one right there. And there's a simple trick that whoever did this valve, uh, this transmission, like I say, I, I've never taken this transmission apart. Simple trick to know where the valve bodies, uh, bolts go. The book does tell you. These are all loose. That's one that was holding it up. All right. So when I lift this up, you'll see that the all the surfaces are flat. Okay. So there's no inconsistencies here. It's completely flat. So if that's the case, all these bolts should hang down the same amount. And look at this. That one's out of place. That was misplaced right there. It's not hanging down like these. Same with this bolt. Not hanging down like this. Okay. Go around. This one's correct. This one's wrong. These two are correct right here. These two are correct. This one in here, not good. This one, too long. Look at this. I can switch this bolt with this bolt. Now that one's right. This one's right. 
whoever taught this person how to do the transmission did not teach him if you don't know where the length what length bolts go in what hole hold the valve body up stick them in and they should all hang the same distance because the surface they mount to is completely even so they should all have the same depth okay so now we're going to go ahead and use air pressure and we're going to see if all our clutches are working properly okay so you have passages in here that hydraulic fluid goes from our valve body into apply different things here's an easy one right now this is my servo that applies the band so i'm going to apply my air and you can see that band applying on the drum and that drum is connected to this drum which is connected to the sun gear so this is what how we hold the sun gear to the case so the servo's working fine the band's working fine there's there's uh, uh ports here there's a port here there's ports here and here there are some that are just lubrication ports so we need a map let me go get the map so we were trying to apply our uh, our direct clutch with this hole, and then there's a little special uh, thing that hint here. When inspecting the old drive uh, direct clutch, check with the CO accumulator piston hole closed. So it's telling you that the the hole for the accumulator has to be closed. So what I did was I put a vice grip to hold that accumulator in, and now when I apply it, you can hear a thud. And you can hear it push the air back out. That's a good clutch. Okay. So one's good. Let's go to number two, which is going to be this port right here. And port number two is our direct clutch. So let's check our, our direct clutch. You should hear a thud and you, and you can hear it. And you hear that little pop. So that clutch is working fine so you want to hear a thud and you want to hear the air when you release on the air, uh, air nozzle blow back out and make a sound okay so now let's go to three so uh one the direct clutch is good or sorry that it's the um actually one was the overdrive direct clutch two was the direct clutch three is the forward clutch so let's do the forward clutch and it should be uh, this one right here and you hear it and it's applying I, oh, I'm not good with that you could hear the air leaking and escaping inside so there is a uh, a leak somewhere with the application from this port to the forward clutch so if you had a leak within this hydraulic circuit that you're hearing uh, and it's not blowing the air back out, then you would have a delayed engagement into uh, four gears. Okay. So again, you don't want to hear that hissing. It is applying, but there's definitely an air leak. Let's go now to four. Four is going to be this port over to the right. And four is going to be the OD uh, brake. And you can see it right here. And it's going right back out. It's going in. We're good. Let's go to five. Five is the band. We already checked it, but we'll do it again. So five is the second coast brake band. So again, five. And that's applying just fine. Okay. Let's go to six. Six is the second brake uh clutch it's not a band because there's only one band in this so is this port right here oh nice and hear that pop yeah that's applying really nice that's a good clutch right there seven the last one is our first and reverse brake and it's three over from the right right here And it's, that's working good. So if I were to evaluate this, seven, which is a low reverse, 
six, was our, which is our second break. These are my two best clutches right here. I really like these. Uh, my worst clutch was our forward clutch, which is number three, which is this port right here. So when I were to take this transmission apart, I would really focus from this port all the way to the clutch, looking for a problem with the hydraulic fluid uh, um, where, it would, where we're getting a leak. This would also cause our uh, line pressures to be low uh, when we did our line pressure testing. So we know now there's a leak internally within the hydraulic circuit. Tear this thing apart and focus on the forward clutch uh, uh, hydraulic circuit uh, passages and seals. All right, so now there's another lab sheet besides uh, the air checking that I want you to do when you pull the valve body off, and that is identifying and checking your accumulators. So here's your accumulators. It's Sometimes there's only a spring underneath. Sometimes there's a spring on top, and sometimes there's a spring on top and on the bottom. So you need a map, okay? All right, so th this front one is labeled CO then the next one looks like it has a uh, so the CO let's see has should have two springs and it looks like the springs go on top not underneath so this is actually flipped so this should have gone this way it's the second spring under there oh there is So let's see if this will go back down inside. So that was installed wrong, okay? Two springs. So let's go to the next one, B0. Here's B0, second bore. Should be a, a spring underneath it, and there is. And there should be a spring on top, okay? So that's good. So the when you check your accumulators, you check for broken springs, okay? You also check your O-rings. They should be pliable. Take them off. Right the, oh, let me put this back in. Take this off. You gotta squeeze, pinch it, pull this off, and then you take your fingertip. I always use three fingers. Rotate that through your fingertips, and you should feel no cuts, no slits. It should be nice and smooth, which it is. So you always check your accumulator O-rings, okay? I'm gonna pull that off right here. I'm gonna pull that up. And again, three fingers, slide it through. And I check any seal, rubber seal. This is what I do to check to see if there is an air leak, okay? So that's good. Always check my bore. So I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna feel my bore. Feel for any tapers anywhere. Okay, you could also look inside and you could see if there's if it's thrusting to one side where there's a problem where you need to take a hone and hone this out. And you can use like a regular wheel cylinder brake hone uh, to hone these out. Okay, so this one's good. Okay, so that is B0 and it was installed correctly. The next one has three springs, one on top and two underneath. So let's go ahead and pull this out. And there is two underneath, okay? So that's good. Again, I would pull this seal out and I would feel it like I showed you. Pull this out and feel it with the three fingers and then feel the bore. Looking for any abnormal wear with your finger, feeling for uh, with your sense of touch and also with your eyes to see if there's any, any thrusting to one side and there isn't. So this is good. That is C2. Now let's go to B2, okay? B2 looks like a spring on top and a spring underneath. All right, so that is good too. Check your seals, check your bore. I'm good with that, okay? Now, what's interesting about these, uh, these uh, accumulators is they, Ford would label this as like a one, two uh, accumulator, two, three accumulator, three, four, and a five six so each accumulator would be for a specific shift point okay but toyota is, in, is doing it differently 
they're using it for any of the clutches. So this is telling you, okay, this one's for the overdrive direct clutch. This one's for the overdrive brake clutch. This one's for the direct clutch. This is for the second brake clutch. So you'd almost need this map to go with the map we just talked about, which is where we air checked our clutches. Okay, so again, we checked our clutches. One was the overdrive direct clutch. So that would be this accumulator uh, right here. The, yeah, that is it. Yeah, okay. Two was the direct clutch. So two right here, direct clutch, that's this accumulator. Three was the, um, the forward clutch. I don't think, you're not gonna have a forward clutch uh, accumulator because that is your initial engagement when you put it in a drive. So you very rarely will you find a accumulator for a forward clutch pack or even a reverse clutch pack or, or BAM. Okay, so now the next one is the, the uh, direct clutch right here. So let's see which one was the direct clutch. Direct clutch was two, this port. And then we had a second brake. So the second brake was number six. That So this accumulator cushions this application. So all it really uh, accumulator does, it cushions the, the sh shift feel when a uh, clutch or a band engages, okay? So it softens it so it doesn't throw your head back. So when you buy a shift kit, sometimes it will tell you to change a spring or throw away a spring, or you'll modify the piston to change the way it's, the shift feel is. So shift kits will, will modify not only your, your accumulators, but they will also modify your valves and your valve body too. And that's a future lesson. Okay, so we've gone over all our accumulators. So you have two lab sheets, air check your clutches, and then the other lab sheet is to check your accumulators. Now we can go ahead and go back in. We have all our springs to set to the same way. Uh, lastly, our accumulators though, they are uh, specific colors, okay? That color correlates to a chart where they have an actual uh, diameter and length. So if you wanna check to see if the spring is weakening or stretched or something's wrong, you would take a caliper and you would measure this. So let's do that real quick. We're gonna measure just one spring and see if it's in spec. Right, so we're having some matching problems with the instructions with the transmission because I don't know what vehicle this came out of, which would really clarify things. But I have a green spring here for this accumulator right here. So the green spring is this one. So the way you would check it is you check the length to see if it matches. It should be two inches, 0 0.441 for the BO accumulator. And I'm gonna expand this. And then this is a vernier caliper, okay? And I go just till it touches and two, that's a two inch. I'm at the four. So the four would be 400 thousandths. I'm at the four here, which would, the 40 is 40 thousandths. So 440 thousandths and right, right above uh, 43. So 240. Two, two inches, 443 thousandths, and two inches, 441 thousandths. So pretty close. And then we could also check the uh, the width of it, okay? The width really doesn't matter. We're gonna install our, our valve body now. Uh, we have all our accumulators in. We tire checked it. Now we're gonna put our valve body in, okay? And we're gonna do the manual shift valves correctly, which is right here. So I, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up, get that little pin in. So when I shift my transmission, that's gonna move, okay? That has to be in place properly. And then I could drop this on, okay? A good, uh, a good technique is to get some junk bolts, cut the head off, and they need to be long, and you could have two long valve body bolts 
as guides and you screw them in that are missing the head, you drop this valve body on. And then once when you get this in place in the manual shift valve, you take those out and then you go ahead and put the, the bolt in where it's supposed to go. Okay. So I always had long uh, valve body bolts with the heads cut off as alignment pins. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, tighten these. I'm just gonna get them all kind of started. I showed you how to find out which bolt is the right length. And let me get these kind of started first. And that one's not the right one. So that one probably goes there, yeah. Okay, so I have the instruction sheet here. And this actually t gives you a map and most transmissions will do this, where the long bolts go, and it's in millimeters and in inches, and where the short bolts go. So we have a 32 and a 32 millimeter, then we have uh, in another 32, and then we have some 23 millimeters, okay? So this is a map of where the long bolts go. And then as far as torquing, each bolt length is in, uh, indicated in the illustration. And then we want to go ahead and torque the bolts to seven foot pounds. And we have to convert that to inch pounds. So seven times 12, that would be, uh, I think 84, right? 84 inch pounds is what we got to torque these to. I'm going to run them down with uh, the speed ratchet now. Start at the middle. Always start at the middle and work out in a circular pattern. Just run them down snug. So I can use that air tool, that, the electric tool that the battery went dead on. But the speed ratchet, believe it or not, once we get used to it. Now here's another mistake people make. This is what makes you have that clunking going in the gear. This has to be a line right there. Okay, that was a problem. So someone didn't torque this bolt down properly right here look at that i was loose and i didn't loosen that that would have been a problem so then you would have had a manual shift valve that can never stay in the proper position because that one bolts loose so it's it's good that we're using a used transmission because um the used transmission shows us the mistakes that students make on a regular basis and i'm just going in a circular pattern Okay. Uh, a lot of transmissions will give you a, uh, a sequence and those bolts will have a number pattern on them and then you torque them to whatever the sequence is. So that's pretty common too. Okay. All right, we're almost done. And then we'll get our torque wrench. So <laughs> this is where it's unpredictable when you do a demo like this. I open up my uh, inch pound torque wrench and lo and behold, there's my uh, alignment dowels that we could use for different size. And I use, I put a little, took a hacksaw and put a screwdriver, a straight edge uh, groove in there. So you, you could use a straight edge. These really help, especially if you're doing it in the car, you really want these because then you can line it up and then slide it on and it's perfectly aligned. That's why I have these long alignment dowels and more so for when you're doing it in the car. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, tap our filter in. Back of a screwdriver is probably fine. Or sorry, tap in our tube. So this is a hydraulic passage that goes to one of the clutches. And then put our filter on. That's missing a screw, two screws. I want you to run these down with a speed ratchet. Torque them to, uh, usually it's the same torque spec as the valve body, 84 inch pounds. And then let's get our pan. Let's go on with our pan. All right, we're putting our pan down. Last two. Torque wrench that's set to the right torque spec. And pan gaskets. 
kind of it's not a bad idea to do the corners first uh, i missed one with the speed ratchet <laughs> So do the do the corners crisscross, and then you can kind of just do one on each middle. One, two, three, and after you do that, you can just go around, and then then you know you got them all. Okay. Again, like I gotta say, the torque wrench is uh, the clicking type. It's so easy to go past, you know, in the inch pounds. Uh, I have a set. I just did it the same as the valve body. It could be less. I don't know. On well, that one, I didn't do. Speed ratchet. But I can't emphasize enough that for pans like this to use a torque wrench too many people use the air tools on these little bolts and then you're putting in the, uh, the time insert that we went over last last week and if you didn't get a chance to do a time insert do it this week and that's it and then all torque wrenches make sure you set them back to zero so the two lab sheets air checking the uh the passages the hydraulic uh, um, hydraulic circuits with the air air nozzle and then checking the accumulators those are your two lab sheets for this week